Uh, I guess uh, uh, for the last last one is called uh, what I call the quote unquote size scale comparison, and then light scaling has a limit. And uh, what are, what are, what do you mean by limit? Okay, uh, the actually short answer is not limits about molecular weight characterization, but about uh, size characterization. We cannot measure the polymer size when your molecular weight is too small. Uh, when, or when your polymer size is too small, we cannot really measure the size of the polymer chain. Okay? So where this is coming from? Uh, so let's start from here. Okay? Length scale of wavelength of the light, lambda. What is the uh, wavelength, uh, wavelength scale of the light? I'm going to draw the line. I think that I, I kind of drew the line briefly before, but I, I am going to talk about it in details now. Okay, so this is a wave electric field oscillation in the light, and this distance between here and here is a lambda, right? A traveling electromagnetic wave we call the light. What will be the good uh, uh, lambda? We, we talked about it, and, and, and anyone? Can I say half micron? That's a, that sounds about right, right? So half micron is a good number for, for me to, to think about. That's a limitation of actually many characterization that we are doing it here. It is a limitation of optical microscopy too. So that's why optical microscopy, you cannot see something smaller than microns and you know, optical microscope. So that's why you need an electron microscope and so on. Okay, so then uh, let me talk to you now about the part. Do you remember I, I give you a lot of times, uh, okay, polymers are like a, like a little coil. The size of the radius can be viewed as a radius of gyration. One equation that I think that I want you to remember was point 0.3 to the molecule weight, and that's an angstrom. Do you remember I give you an approximate equation like that? So, uh, so that, so you know, this is a something like this, and then I'm going to give you an an example. Okay. When, when you think about it, I am going to draw polymer chain radius of gyration is about about 1% of your lambda. How about that? Okay, so what is a 1%? 1 over 100 times 500 nanometers. That is 5 nanometers, okay? This is actually a not bad scenario, but if you look at that, this, I'm just graphically showing it to you here. That's a 100, so I'm, I'm drawing the polymer chain that's about size of the polymer chain, right? So we are talking about size of the polymer chain, which is 1% of the, the whole wavelength of the light. And when you see that, uh, this one I can now, can you see that now? The, uh, no, no, you can say, okay, so that's a 5 nanometer. That corresponding to 50 angstroms. And then I can use 0.3 to the m, right? And then, you know, this one corresponding to the case one. That's about, I calculate in advance, that's about 30,000 gram per mole. Right? 30,000 gram per mole is a decent molecular weight, and then you, you can think about uh, measuring the size of the polymers in, in this way. Uh, but that's uh, very small, right? And uh, let, let me give you another example. When Rg is about here, many percent? Yeah, five percent, for example, of lambda. That's a uh, uh, that's a pre. I mean, that's it's not so bad, but it's uh, still small, but is a uh, more decent. And I want to have a physical idea about this. So that's about 5 over 100, 100 nanometers, 25 nanometers, okay? 
and that corresponding for you to say RG is 250 angstrom and 0.3 to square root M and that's essentially we are talking about molecular weight in the range is about 700,000 yeah, we are getting close to the 1 million. We are, you, you guys are ne even not even close to the being a 10% of the, mo uh, the whole wavelengths of the light, right? And uh, what, when, when I, I didn't talk about in details about actually what is a, how physically uh, the radius of uh, gyration is being measured is the following, okay? So this is a very, very simple pictures. Okay, so this is a polymer chain, and then I am going to draw one uh, each monomer unit, and they, they, these are the one are source of the scattering of the light. Okay, and so so when you have those, and these positions are all correlated because they are in the same chain. And then what's going to happen is when you change your angle, Q, and you, your intense scatter light intensity will come down like this, just a little bit, okay? And this decrease in the intensity because uh, we, are, we are measuring, let's say, this is your, your detector, IS, the distance here, distance there, distance there, this is all different, and they will, the, the distance is not large enough to have any constructive interference, but it will have a destructive interferences, and you have a little, a little tail. So that's a, that's a little small uh, differences. And then that's how, when your uh, intensity, scatter light intensity, is uh, changing when you change the scattering angle, uh, and then this is a, we can measure the radius of gyration, okay? But when your polymers are really small, right? Okay, so, I mean, I can physically enforce that, but what you see here is like this. I mean, the changes might be there, but it's uh, so small that we cannot capture that. So it's a, it's a physical argument that how big the polymer chains and each monomers are contributed to the, the uh, interference and then because of the proximity of the poly uh, monomers in the polymer chain, they have a destructive interference. So there's a small drop in the scatter light intensity when you change an angle. But when the uh, size is very small, then you will not see that happen. So, I mean, think about when your RG is smaller than 1% of lambda, right? So that, I don't think that's a, that's a good story to, to see, but certainly uh, this is okay uh, when, when you are seeing this one like that. So, uh, so that's the physical criteria now for you to think about. So I love to draw the pictures here now. This is something that probably the the take home message for you guys to uh, remember, and then I'll, I'll put it onto the YouTube. Okay. Well, whatever. I think that gives. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to draw the line, simple line. It just uh, this is a, just a length scale. So this is just a length scale, and what I hear is R G over lambda. So a lambda naught, which is a ratio between the, the length scale of your probing light and the object that you are doing the light scattering from. And it's fair for me to say, oh, okay, actually, let me, I put the wrong position, so let me delete that. And uh, let me write RG. This is a cool idea, okay, so then I think good reference point is 1%. And then, uh, and then something like 20% will be amazing, right? That will be, that will be good that I can easily, easily calculate so that I can, I can measure those, right? So the 1%, 
I even say 1% might be too pushing it, so 2% might be good. So somewhere in between, and we calculate before, 1% is about 30K, right? That's a molecular weight. And uh, this one is about 100,000, okay? So if you want to measure the uh, radius of gyration reliably, your molecular weight has to be somewhat bigger than 100K, and that's uh, actually quite high molecular weight, and then you can comfortably measure the radius of gyration from the light scattering. Okay? If you want to, one of your friend, hey, you, had, you have a light scattering equipment, I have a measure, the, I made the polymer sample, you know the molecular weight is not so high, but I really want to measure the size of the polymer. You know, GPC says that uh, the molecular weight, weight average molecular weight is, for example, like a 30K or 10K. Can I measure the size using the light scattering? You just say, no, you can't do that because of the, the size is so small compared to the wavelength of the light. There's a not enough reduction as a changing the scattering angle. So although you have a super duper light scattering instrument, you cannot really uh, do uh, see the changes. Okay, So that's uh, something that is an uh, important message that I wanted to tell you. And this is a 10 to the 10 million. Okay, so 10 million is a pretty you know, enormous. And at some point that actually this is where you have a one, right? 100% one to one ratio. And what I can say uh, here is the case where you are, I would say up to here. Okay, so from here. You can measure weight average molecular weight and second burial constant, okay? And from here, I mean, somewhere the like 50K or so and higher, you can measure weight average molecular weight, second burial constant, and uh, the what is called the radius of gyration, okay? Uh, but when actually there is a limit for them too, okay? So let me actually put a little... I was trying to be uh, too generous. So, oh, oh shoot, okay. That's, uh, okay, let's see. So this one is a uh, weight average molecular weight, B, and the radius of gyration. Probably up to here, okay? So that's, that's good, and uh, usually you don't make the polymer higher than 10 million for many, many regions, and you cannot really easy to dissolve and it's hard to process and so on, so it's not. Okay, so this range is the gym plot, gym equation is can be used. And this equation, do you remember what equation do you guys use? The bar equation, right? And you know somebody can argue and so to be to be politically true Gym equation can be used in, for the entire ranges. Okay, so this equation can be used for the entire ranges. But just uh, measuring the RG itself is uh, you you need to have a sufficiently large molecular weight, such as about uh, fifty to hundred thousand gram per mole molecular weight. And what happened here? Have you guys heard about this one? Uh, this is uh, what is called, uh, what, what about here? If you are some scattering object, such as like a big droplet, his size is, is a, a few micron. Have you heard about this argument? Uh, this is uh, when you see the, what is a good example here? This is uh, essentially cloud, fog. This is all in that ranges, okay? When you look at the cloud, it looks white, right? And that's the one, you have a water droplet that has a, a size is quite big. And this is, a, it's a, it has its own name. When your size scattering object is actually much bigger than the wave, you know, many wave, numbers of wavelengths of the light, and this is what we call the MIA scattering. 
compared to the Rayleigh scattering that we are. So this is uh, in the realm of Rayleigh scattering still. The size length scale has a lot of uh, one, and I just essentially scratch the surfaces of the argument. But it's very important for you to have a good understanding on the size scale of the polymer chain. So this blue curve is very useful for you to know. And then also at the same time, uh, when, you, when you see this uh, understanding in the polymer chemistry, what are the molecular weight ranges that, give a, that I can uh, measure the uh, polymer uh, radio cell gyration. Sometimes I cannot really measure the radio cell gyration because of the, it does not have enough uh, signal when you change an angle. So divide, divide equation that you remember, divide equation is 1 over m plus 2bc, right? And this one, gym equation is 1 over m, 1 plus 1 third q square rg square plus 2bc, okay? So gym equation is a much more generic version, but Remember that uh, most of you actually think that you are doing the gym, but actually they are actually doing the divide equation. Uh, most people just want to know the weight average molecular weight. Okay, not many people are interested in RG and the second burial constant. And divide equation works, right? Divide equation works. Uh, well, gym equation works at any ranges. I just do not have to, I just cannot get the RG information when polymers are so small. Okay. <clears throat>